Hey, what's up, folks? It's Wix. Uh, I have this recording here. I'm going through some old recordings because I'm doing this. I'm, I'm getting this Agenda 21 thing out because this is insane. I, I keep telling you people, we're in serious fucking trouble right now. And nobody seems to get that. I want to know when somebody is going to fucking stand up for America. When's there going to be a fucking leader among the 300 million people in the damn country? I want someone to show some fucking initiative here. This is bullshit. Now, as you can see, probably, I don't know, but I got a lot of fucking projects going on here. And... Google's fucking with me. I can't. I wasted all day on Google yesterday. I can't do it anymore. I just fucking can't. That's not my fight. And that's exactly how they're fucking trying to get you. I don't, I'm not doing it. Fuck you, Google. I mean, at this point, everybody had to be saying in government, you know, we're actually, we can actually get away with this. Because I believe this is the... Third, uh, third, second or third time that the fucking country was warned by someone in government that the country was trying to be taken over by communists in government. You ain't gonna fucking see this shit anywhere, that's for damn sure. So pay attention. The report on Senator McCarthy is by definition controversial. And I request your permission to read from script whatever remarks Murrow and Friendly may make. If the senator feels that we have done violence to his words or pictures, and desires, so to speak, to answer himself, How about his career? opportunity will be afforded him on this program. Our working thesis tonight is this quotation. If this fight against communism is made a fight between America's two great political parties, the American people know that one of these parties will be destroyed. No, and they the do, Republic huh? cannot endure very long as a one-party system. We applaud that statement, and we think Senator McCarthy ought to. He said it 17 months ago in Milwaukee. The American people realize that this cannot be made a fight between America's two great political parties. If this fight against communism is made a fight against America's two great political parties, the American people know that one of those parties will be destroyed, and the Republic can't endure very long as a one-party system. But on February 4th, 1954, Senator McCarthy spoke of one party's treason. This was Charleston, West Virginia, where there were no cameras running. It was recorded on tape. The issue between Republicans and Democrats is clearly drawn. It has been deliberately drawn by those of an entire of 20 years of peace. Now, the hard fact is, the hard fact is that those who wear the label, those who wear the label Democrat, wear it with the stain of a historic betrayal. Seventeen months ago, candidate Eisenhower met Senator McCarthy in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and he laid down some ground rules on how he would fight communism if elected. <laughs> that amazed that American that American principle of uh, trial by jury of the innocent until proved guilty are all observed, and I expect to do it. That same night in Milwaukee, Senator McCarthy stated what he would do if the general was elected. I spent about half an hour with the general last night. Well, I can't, well, I can't report that we agreed entirely on everything. <laughs> now, see, folks, this is before... This is right before um, Eisenhower got elected into office. So keep in mind, the whole time Eisenhower is in office, he knows about this. And he fucking sold you out. Uh, hey, they got to a fucking a war guy. Everyone thinks Eisenhower was some kind of hero because, oh, we didn't go to war under Eisenhower. No, he did a lot more damage. And at least at the fucking end of his president, I mean, I think the guy was just trying to make it out of the fucking presidency alive. 
And at the end of the presidency, he gave the best speech he possibly could without saying something that might get him killed. But I mean, he pretty much fucking said it for you. Eisenhower didn't say near as much as this guy said, or as Smedley Butler said, which, by the way, would be coming up. But pay attention. I can, I can report that when I left that meeting with the general, I had the same feeling as when I went in, and that is that he's a great American, will make a great president, an outstanding president. But I want to tell you tonight, tell the American people, as long as I represent you and the rest of the American people in the Senate, I shall continue to call them as I see them, regardless of who happens to be present. Now, a sample of an investigation. The witness was Reed Harris, for many years a civil servant in the State Department. And keep in mind, too, that all of these people, all of these people, even the fucking news guy right there, are, is trying to make this guy look bad and make it look like he is the communist and he is the one trying to infiltrate government. Directing the information service. Harris was accused of helping the communistic cause by curtailing some broadcasts to Israel. Uh, you, you attended Columbia University in the early 30s. I right? did, Mr. Chairman. Will you speak a little louder, sir? I did, Mr. Chairman. And were you expelled from Columbia? I was suspended from classes on April 1st, 1932. I was later reinstated, and I resigned from the university. And you resigned yeah, after you threatened the fucking president of, of the uh, university. Did the Civil Civil Liberties Union provide you with an attorney at that time? I had many offers of attorneys, and one of those was from the American Civil Liberties Union, yes. The question is, did the Civil Liberties Union supply you with an attorney? And the ACLU is a bunch of slime yes. balls, too. The answer is yes. Uh, you know, the Civil Liberties Union has been listed as a front for and doing the work of the Communist Party. That's why. Mr. Chairman, this was 1932. Yeah, I know that's by 1932. Do you know that they since have been listed as a front for and doing the work of the Communist Party? I do not know that they have been listed, so, sir. You don't, you don't know that they have been listed. I have heard that mention. I have read that mention. The Reed Harris hearing demonstrates one of the senator's techniques. Twice, he said the American Civil Liberties Union was listed as a subversive front. The Attorney General's list does not and has never listed the ACLU as subversive, nor does the FBI or any other federal government agency. And the American Civil Liberties Union holds in its files letters of commendation from President Truman, President Eisenhower, and General MacArthur. On one thing, the senator has been consistent. Often operating as a one-man committee, he has traveled Yeah, it's far, easy to be consistent when you tell the truth. Accused civilian and military leaders of the past administration of a great conspiracy to turn over the country to communism. Investigated and substantially demoralized the present State Department. Made varying charges of espionage at Fort Monmouth. The Army said it has been unable to find anything relating to espionage there. I hate to impose on your time, but I've just got two pages. This is the abuse, which the real meat of the abuse. This is the official reporter and record of the hearing. After he said that he wouldn't remove that general from the army who cleared the communist major, I said to him, I said, then, general, you should be removed from any command, any man who has been given the honor of being promoted to general and who says, I will protect another general who protects communists is not fit to wear that uniform, general. I... Wait till you hear the bleeding heart. Scream and cry about our method of trying to drag the truth from those who know or should know who covered up a Fifth Amendment communist made. But they say, oh, it's all right to uncover them, but don't get rough doing it, Mr. Yeah. No one familiar with the history of his country can deny that congressional committees are useful. It is necessary to investigate before legislating. But the 
line between investigating and persecuting is a very fine one, and the junior senator from Wisconsin has stepped over it repeatedly. His primary achievement has been in confusing the public mind as between the internal and the external threats of communism. We must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. We must remember always that accusation is not proof. And another thing we must remember always is that journalists aren't supposed to be biased, asshole. And that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of law. We will not walk in fear one of another. We will not be driven by fear into an age of unreason if we dig deep in our history and our doctrine. And remember... Yeah, and remember too, this guy is reading from script. Okay, uh, who gave him the script? Probably the person who owns the fucking television company. Who owns the television company? <laughs> Keep going. That we are not descended from fearful men. Not from men who fear to write, to speak, to associate, and to defend causes that were for the moment unpopular. This is no time for men who oppose Senator McCarthy's methods to keep silent, or for those who approve. We can deny our heritage and our history, but we cannot escape responsibility for the result. There is no way for a citizen of a republic to abdicate his responsibility. As a nation, we have come into our full inheritance at a tender age. We proclaim ourselves as indeed we are, the defenders of freedom, wherever it continues to exist in the world. But we cannot defend freedom abroad by deserting it at home. Mm -hmm. The actions of the junior senator from Wisconsin have caused alarm and dismay amongst our allies abroad and given considerable comfort to our enemies. And whose fault is that? No one is. He didn't create this situation of fear. He merely exploited it, and rather successfully. Cassius was right. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. Four weeks later, McCarthy's reply. Uh, good evening. Mr. Edward R. Murrow, Educational Director of the Columbia Broadcasting System, devoted his program to an attack on the work of the United States Senate Investigating Committee and on me personally as its chair. And over the past four years, he has made repeated attacks upon me and those fighting Congress. And of course, neither Joe McCarthy nor Edward R. Murrow is of any great importance as individuals. We are only important in our relation to the great struggle to preserve our American liberty. The Senate Investigating Committee has forced out of government and out of important defense plans, communists engaged in the Soviet conspiracy. And you know, it's interesting to note that the viciousness of Murrow's attacks is in direct ratio to our success in digging out countries. Now, ordinarily, ordinarily, I would not take time out the important work at hand to answer Murrow. However, in this case, I feel justified in doing so because Murrow is the symbol, the leader, and the cleverest of the jackal pack, which is always found at the throat of anyone who dares to expose individual communist defectors. I am compelled by the fact to say to you that Mr. Edward R. Murrow, as far back as 20 years ago, was engaged in propaganda for communist